Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sport Fish Boat. Well, hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Renovation Sport Fish. Well, in this episode, we finished removing the decking all the way back along the gunnels to an area I call the air intake area, which is basically where the, there's a couple scoops that draw air down into the um, engine compartment for fresh air. Uh, and that also ends where the plywood gunnel decking meets the teak uh, cover boards for the cockpit. So we'll look at that area and see what's going on there. Um, we also take a look at the main bulkhead. I call it the main bulkhead. It's the area between the cockpit and the cabin where the door is and a window. And um, we'll check out the condition uh, along that as well. Um, as far as putting in new stuff, we get some uh, more shear clamps in along the gunnels. The second layer we start working on. And up near the bow area, we um, fabricate and install some uh, rub rails. Um, so that's pretty exciting to get some of that stuff going. And a few other things along with that. Um, but anyways, that's about it. Um, enjoy the episode and um, yeah, here we go. Episode 4. Well, now that you've seen what I was saying, uh, you can understand how that could be a little bit discouraging. Uh, I guess more so than being discouraged by the condition of it was the fact that I didn't know what I was looking at. There were so many boards with notches and there was some patchwork done and all kinds of stuff going on. I was more worried about how I was going to put it all back together. I had to figure out what was going on. And you know, that's one of the biggest things I've found with this, working on this boat. It's not always the actual work, it's how, how, how to figure out what to do next. So you don't get yourself into a corner and say, oh man, I wish I would have done this first before that. So that was something I had to kind of put aside and really think about and make a million sketches of and figure out what I was going to do with my game plan. So I didn't want to jump right on that right away. Um, but I was curious about how it looked on the inside. So I took the refrigerator out in the galley because that was in about the same area that on the starboard side that this intake, um, air intake thing was. So I pulled out that refrigerator. I also removed the it was a white piece of laminate about halfway up along the galley wall there. I took that off to explode, expose all the plywood on the bulkhead. And it wasn't that pretty. I mean, the bulkhead had a nice water stain all along it, and it was above the level of the co cockpit deck. So I knew water was getting in through the cockpit and soaking up in there somehow. First thing I wanted to do was check out the same area on the outside because you know, that's where the leak's going to be coming from. Um, so I can see in the photo there's a metal plate attached to the bulkhead wall. I don't think that was original. Um, one of the pre previous owners put that on to help curb the water infiltration in there and it probably helped um, but it didn't stop it. And um, 
And below that, there was these, there's a piece here. This is a piece from that side, the starboard side. Uh, it's a little baseboard piece, it's teak. And surprisingly, it's in really good condition. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. And it's got some sealant still on the back here. Car is a rock, so that's probably why it wasn't sealing. And there's a little bit along the bottom too. You probably put it in there. I doubt this piece was ever taken off, but could be wrong, but I doubt it. It just doesn't look like it. There's no extra screw holes in here or anything. And speaking of screws, it was very easy to remove this piece because <clears throat> I don't know if you can see, but the screws only stick out of this thing about a quarter of an inch. So there wasn't a lot of bite. I mean, probably spaced about eight inches apart. So to remove this, all I did was stick a putty knife behind it, and it was really this hard sealant that was holding it on, I think. Because the plywood bulkhead was rotted, so it just bing, popped right off. No problem. Piece of cake. So hopefully I can... Um, salvage all of these. I think they're all in good condition. I didn't break any taking them off. Uh, see if they clean up and see how they, they work. Um, it'd be nice to be able to put some original stuff on back on the boat. But if not, we'll make new stuff. So once I got this off and I was able to kind of poke around on the wall a little bit with a screwdriver and that just confirmed what I could see that the thing was all dry rotted and not in good condition. So then I started really um, chiseling away at it with a little chisel and a little hammer and stuff, no power tools. And I removed everything you see in these pictures with just hand tools, didn't need a power tool. Just was falling apart in my hands basically. So that was it, that was the condition of the wall. That's what I had to deal with. So one more thing on the list and one more challenge ahead of me. So that's all right, I can do it. Uh, one thing you'll notice in the photos, you know, from the inside, you see the nails that hold down the decking, like sticking out of the main framing beam. And one part of the curiosity in the construction that I was noticing was you had your main bulkhead wall, and then you had your first cross beam for, uh, that supports the decking. But they weren't right up against each other. There was a little space, so they put like, I think it was like a half inch piece of plywood in there. Now why they had a space in there, I don't know. I don't know why you would have a space in there, but must have, they must have had their way of doing things, and in this case, there was a space they had to fill, so they put a piece of plywood in there. But the unfortunate thing is, you know, when they nailed their decking down, they must have had an off day or something, and they, uh, missing the main beam they were nailing it into that plywood. Now I'm sure that didn't help with the water water infiltration and the rock situation. But there's probably no sealing in there either, so whatever. I'm not planning on putting it in there. I'm planning to put the beam right up against the wall when I do my construction. So yeah, that was that was what I had to deal with. Um, you know the worst part of all this was Probably the fact that, you know, most of the boat building process that I'm find, finding out, and I was finding out at this point, was trying to figure out what to do next. I mean, yeah, doing the work is doing the work, but figuring out the proper order to do things is, is a logistical nightmare if you've never done it before. And I've done, I did countless sketches and trying to minimize doing something twice. And that would be the worst thing. You know, doing it once is bad enough, but doing it twice would suck. So, you know, that was just another logistical thing I had to figure out. You know, what you know, what do you do first? Do you do the gunnel? Do you do the wall? Do you do this, that? And um, it was just in a series of continuing um, things you have to figure out. And that could take up just as much, if not more time uh, on the boat than the actual work. So it was that way in 2012 and it's still that way now. I'm still dealing with the same thing. Um, but that's the challenge of it. And um, it's just one more thing. So it was on to the next thing. Well, so enough of the talk about removing stuff. 
we've covered that plenty already. Uh, it's time to talk. Of, time to talk about something positive, like putting some stuff back in. And so I went right back to the gunnels where I was uh, continuing on replacing the shear clamps. Now I got the first layer on pretty much uh, pretty far back, not quite back to that area to take area, but you know close close to that area. So it was time to put the second layer on all along that side gunnel area. And you can see in the photos here that um, I put them on when I when I cut them. I made the inside face line up with the shear clamp that I had already put on the first layer. And the, uh, the outside area, I just let it overhang the hole. After I let that hang over, and I didn't want to have to be accurate in cutting that, so I left it hanging over, and then I filled any little gap between the bottom of that shear clamp and the actual top of the hole. <clears throat> if any, it wasn't too much. And I also filled in any of the screw heads from the first shear clamp. Sanded all that smooth. That gave me a nice, um, smooth, level surface for the pilot bearing to ride on when I routed that outside edge of the upper shear clamp. <clears throat> so that's how I uh, cut those shear clamps on the outside. I had a big, white, flush cut routing bit and just went along and whoop, cut it right off. You also notice I put some more of those um, interconnecting locking pieces that go between the deck shelf and the uh, shear clamp wherever there was a seam where the plywood, plywood was going to end. Uh, and yeah, that was it. So I got some accomplishment done on uh, those shear clamps. That was it. One of the other things you could probably also notice uh, while I was working on the shear clamps was I was also working my way sanding the lower piece of the uh, window frame, uh, the one that I had to squeeze the two pieces together and epoxy used out as in the previous episode. Uh, and sure enough, the, the mahogany was nice under there and it, it was in good shape, so it was just one extra thing I could do and just move along as I went. And then here you see in this photograph here that I was able to, on a rare occasion, take a picture of the entire side of the boat because usually there's all boats in here, but on this day there wasn't any, so uh, I was able to open it up and work on it and actually take a photograph. And you can also see how I added this stick-on zipper thing to the shrink wrap, and that made it easy to just unzip a certain portion of it. I put these little clips on uh, to hold it down and just unzip it and zip it back down at the end of the night. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be cutting the sh uh, shrink wrap on the boat shortly this year, so I'll probably give a little demo on how I do that and how I clip it. So yeah, look forward to that if you ever feel like working on the shrink wrap. And that was it for the shear shear clamps for twenty twelve. So getting the first two layers of the shear clamp in was a big milestone, but even better than that, it allowed me to start thinking about the next step. Now the next step was going to be to fabricate and install the rubber rail. And um, you know the original rubber rail on the boat was painted white, and it probably was teak, but I'm not really sure. It was rotted in some spots. It had been patched. Um, in a couple spots at the bow and so I wasn't really quite sure what it was. So I had to decide what kind of wood I was actually going to replace it with. Now I could go with teak, but as anybody knows that's ever bought teak, it's really super expensive. And when you're building a boat like I am, like the whole boat, um, you know, I can spread the money around. I, I can't afford to just be you know, buying everything that I want. <laughs> I wish I could. Uh, so I had to start thinking about an alternative to, to teak. And um, I thought about mahogany because the tow reels are mahogany. But I didn't think mahogany was really hard enough and hardy enough to, for a rub rail. And that's going to take some abuse. At least the main part of the rub rail. Uh, so I ended up 
discovering this, uh, this Brazilian hardwood here, it's called Ite. People make decks out of it nowadays. Um, stuff lasts forever, it's hard as a rock. It's pretty heavy stuff, uh -huh, weight-wise. And I don't even know if it floats. It may not even float. I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, when I got it from the wood place I got my, uh, get all my wood from, they told me that, um, you know, the dust from it isn't very good for you, so you might probably want to wear a respirator, so I heed their advice and, uh, and do that when I'm uh, working with it. Um, it's very hard on the tools. I went through a lot of tools working with this stuff. And this is a piece I have in my hand here of the actual, uh, stuff that they cut for me. Uh, they cut me, uh, yeah, probably a dozen pieces, about eight to seven, eight feet long each. Uh, I gave them an old scrap of the old um, rubber rail and they were able to cut this profile for me. They had a full machine shop there. So that was nice. We got that all in. It's a, pieces are a little bit narrower in this direction than the original factory ones, only because I changed the design a little bit of this whole area, as you can see by the sketch. So anyways, now that I got the wood, now I gotta think about installing it. I didn't really want to get into steam bending at this time. I'm still pretty new at this woodworking thing at this point, you know, in the boat building. So I, uh, a little intimidated by it and I didn't have any of the equipment to do it. And I figured, well, before I get invested in all that, maybe I'll just try to install this stuff just cold, just see if it'll bend. And uh, I was starting at the bow, so that those were the pieces that if they weren't gonna bend, they weren't gonna bend. That was the tightest bends, all the pieces. I bought all kinds of new clamps to do this process. And just clamped it all really close together. Now, it, it kind of took, um, took to the bend pretty good. The last three feet, though, I had a little bit of difficulty. It was starting to be difficult to do, and um, <clears throat> I had a feeling it might actually crack. So I stopped at that point and um, just had to think about, well, what's my next step here? What else can I try? So I came up with an idea of, why not? It's not going to hurt anything. I'll try it anyways. So I soaked it in water for a couple days. I took a big piece of four inch PVC and capped the ends and filled with water and floated a piece in there for two days in the sun and then tried it again. Now this second time, it was, it actually, it, to my amazement, it actually, it actually took the whole bend, the whole, the whole way, even the last three feet. It softened it up just enough to do it. Uh, and I was really happy about that, let me tell you. Uh, so I took it off again and then soaked it one more time before the real installation. And when I did it for the, the real time now, I drilled the holes for the screws as I went along, probably about six to eight inches apart, I'd say, <clears throat> and bent it. Now, when I bent it for the real time, you know, I wasn't just trying to bend it around. Um, I was also trying to uh, bend it down to match the shear, too. So that added a little bit more challenge to it. But I was able to do it, and I did it by myself. So I had to have like a contraction like an arm sticking out to hold the thing out there while I bent it around and kept adjusting it and that worked good once it, you know once I got the piece on there screwed on then and clamped and I left it there for a couple days kind of dry out in, in the hopes that it would actually uh, get a little memory and you know hold some of the shape when I took it off um, when I took it off a few days later I don't know how much memory it retained I guess it retained some of it, but it wasn't like it came off in a bend, <laughs> you know, it went straight, straight again. Um, but that was okay, I got it in the first time, I can get it in again. So, once I uh, found out everything was working good, then I went to the real deal and uh, hit the bullet and installed it. I installed the two front pieces first, and they went in pretty good. I didn't have any problems doing it. It was just like when I tested it the last time. And then I took on the next two, and the next two pieces uh, went in much easier. Started on a bend, so that was a little difficult, just lining them up. I kind of cut the pieces at a 45, like a scarf joint, and I really had to jam 
jammed that second piece in really super tight and screwed that in really good and it was trying to pull out as I went so I used an extra, extra amount of clamps in that area. Anyways, that was it for the rub rails. So the last thing we're going to talk about in this episode is this little wood spacer piece. Well, that's what I call it. Um, this piece isn't used in any boat construction that I know of, um, but I'm not an expert at boat construction. This is something that I came up with. If you just think about maybe what the factory did, they brought the rub rail all the way up to the bottom of the tow rail and then brought the plywood decking right to the back of the rub rail. Now, the way the stainless steel rub rail attaches, the screw goes through the wood rub rail into the end grain of the plywood. And that's where a lot of the plywood was rotted. So if these screws leaked at all, you didn't seal them or whatever, it was a path right for the water to get right into the plywood. And that's something I wanted to try to avoid. I mean, I just, I'm replacing all this plywood because water got in there. I'm going to try to avoid that as much as I can. So by putting this spacer piece in, it does a few things. It allows a solid piece of mahogany to take that screw for the stainless steel rub rail. I left a space between the plywood and this spacer piece. I left a gap there on purpose. I didn't make it as tight as I could. I left a little bit of a gap that I filled with thickened epoxy. So if water did get into this thing, it wasn't going to infiltrate into the plywood. And so I'm hoping that that's going to be a solution to any issues if that ever leaks. Uh, so I made these little wood spacer pieces. They, they follow along the whole top of the rub rails. They weren't too hard to um, fabricate. You know, they just used a router and, and a jigsaw. I didn't get too fancy with cutting them. They didn't have to be perfect. Um, and I cut the outside edge just like I did with the, um, with the upper shear clamp. I just routed it after I put it in. And you can also see in these photos that um, I put a couple coats of penetrating epoxy on uh, just to protect it in case any water um, made its way through the uh, shrink wrap at any time. I didn't want any of this stuff to get ruined. So anyways, that was it. Well, thanks for watching that episode. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me that like. Um, share it with someone if you think they're interested. And, um, of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Um, looking forward to the next episode. And um, until then, have a good one, and we'll see you soon.